Welcome to this lecture on the parasitic infections. When we talk about parasitic infections, we divide them into two types. The two types that we are concerned with are ectoparasitic infections and endoparasitic infections. The name itself suggests what they mean. When we talk about ecto, ecto means outside. So that means the parasites live on the human body. Okay, they live on the human body. And when we talk about endo, endo means inside. So here, these parasitic infections, the parasites stay inside the human body. So that is the difference between ectoparasitic and endoparasitic infections. The two important ectoparasitic infections are number one, scabies and number two, pediculosis. So these are the two most important ectoparasitic infections with which we are concerned. And trust me, these are the most high yield topics that you get in dermatology. Why so? Go through the last five year questions. There will be at least one question on either scabies or pediculosis in at least one paper every year. So if I talk about the yield, the small 30 minute topic is the most important in the entire series of lectures. Starting with the first that is scabies. So what is scabies? This is an itchy, contagious, ectoparasitic infection of the skin. So this is itchy, this is contagious and it is an ectoparasitic infection. What is the name of the mite? The name of the mite is Sarcoptis scabii var hominis. So the name of the mite is Sarcoptis scabii var hominis. How do these mites affect the body? Even there may be a millions of uh, the lesions on the body, but the number of mites at one time are only 10 to 12. So at one time on the human body, there are only 10 to 12 mites. This is a very important point. You need to remember it is a question that only 10 to 12 mites are present at one time. How does the disease spread? The disease spreads by close touch. So the disease spreads by close contact or touch. Fine. Now, when does a close contact or touch happen? A close contact or touching happens when people stay in overcrowded conditions. So, places where there is overcrowding, where a lot of people stay together under one roof, there are higher chances of scabies happening within those groups of people. And what other factor will help? The other factor that will help in the transmission of scabies is the fact that you don't maintain a personal hygiene. The patients do not take a bath. So where there is lack of water for maintaining personal hygiene, where there is a lack of sanitation, there is overcrowding, there are higher chances of ectoparasitic infections happening. Which is why this disease is also called as a water washed disease. Due to this, it is called as a water washed disease. A very important point, it has been asked only in one question till now, but this you will also read in community medicine. We are revising it here that ectoparasitic infections like scabies are mostly water washed diseases. Now, what is the incubation period of this disease? When we talk about the incubation period in scabies, the incubation period is divided into what will happen after the first exposure, how much time will it take and then how much time will it take on subsequent exposures. In the first exposure, 
the incubation period is four to five weeks. In the first exposure, the incubation period is four to five weeks. And in reinfection, that is in subsequent exposures, it reduces to somewhere around two to three days. Okay? Four to five weeks in the first exposure and in the subsequent reinfections, it is around two to three days. This is the most important question on this page, the incubation period. It is very, very often asked, rather amongst the most common questions with respect to scabies. Now, I have to tell you why it is so. 